Choosing your first hand plane is one of the major decisions you will have to make early in your woodworking career and you want to make it right because uh, of that decision will depend the quality of your progress, your learning and the quality of your experience as well. And when you open for the first time a tool catalog, you will realize that there is a big wildering amount of different brands, different types, different lengths, different prices, and they will look all the same to you. Now, most people choose a number four as their first hand plane, but I think that's wrong. And let me tell you why. Number four plane or a smoothing plane, it's a very nice plane, but it's very good only at that, at smoothing, uh, the work after you've done all the joinery and everything so that you can get a, a clean nice surface and if there is any unevenness you can just ride on it surf it because it has a short sole okay it, it could be also good to create reference surfaces in a small bit of timber like this one as you can see it's more or less the same uh, size as our uh, smoothing plane here so you could create a reference edge uh, you could create a reference face um, but the, the reality in woodworking is that for the most part we work on bigger components like this one this is this belongs to a piece I'm working on right now and as you can see uh, this plane is just too small to create an accurate uh, reference edge on this on this board it doesn't mean you cannot do this but it's going to be much more difficult and uh, much less precise on the other hand there's a jack plane as this one which is a bit longer and it's much more versatile and actually that's my go-to tool in my everyday life when I'm uh, doing woodworking which is daily so um, really much more uh, useful in many many different instances and I, I will tell you now a little bit about that. So the jack plane is very similar to the smoothing plane, it's just about 12 centimeters longer and a little bit heavier which is much better as well. And uh, this length of the sole will allow you to create reference surfaces with a great deal of precision and with a great deal of ease as well. So if we offer it to the style again you can see their lengths are much more likely and this one will perform a much better operation. Later we'll do that in a piece of wood and you will see what I'm, I'm talking about. For instance, uh, you could join boards like this one, small boards, to create panels. Like the panel we have here, this is a, a demonstration piece for my students. They do this as, as an exercise and you can see the panel here is a book match. So we carefully prepare the stock to get a flat panel which is symmetrical in the grain and we can do that with a, with a jack plane. Obviously for bigger boards a jointer plane would be uh, the right tool to go but that's a very specialized uh, tool. It's quite heavy, it's quite big and it will be very good only for the bigger boards. So a jack plane is long enough to do precision operations on most components and also is small enough so that you can use it also as a smoothing plane. And that's why I think uh, it's a much uh, better tool. If you only have a smoothing plane, you will soon miss something larger. If you're a hand tool only person, you will want to convert raw planks like this one into accurately prepared stock. And for that you usually would use a scrap plane. However, I don't have a scrap plane, I just use my jack plane with a different blade. I just took a regular blade and I made a, a large camber in it, uh, like a 20 centimeter radius camber. And that's uh, perfect for me to do this kind of, of work when I want to do it by hand. So, when you're going cross grain, you really want some uh, length ahead of the, of the cutter, some sole ahead of it. And if we compare it to a smoothing plane, so you can see the smoothing plane has a very little uh, length ahead of the cutter in the sole. So that helps a lot with registration here.
Now, the fanciest planes are extremely expensive and some of my students find very difficult to justify a 400-500 price tag. Dictum offers a more reasonably priced range of tools which perform very very well and uh, in my experience in this price range you won't find anything uh, which has better value for the money. So this is my recommendation to students who don't have very very deep pockets to go to the fanciest of planes but they want something that they work they will work f uh, with for, for many many years and this is a plane you will get good results with. Now let me change the blade. I will get a, a regular blade, the one I use for finer operations and uh, I will break down for you all the components and I will tell you what I think. This is a jack plane which is new. They have sent it to me to make this uh, review for you and uh, so I can uh, show you really how this tool performs out of the box. Okay, so here is the bed. The bed is an important part of any hand plane. Uh, it's this surface here. Uh, this is what will give support to your blade. So it needs to be very well machined, dead flat. As you can see, this plane has a very well machined surface, which is flat, it's clean, and it will offer as much uh, support as the blade needs, which is very important. Threaded mechanisms are very fine and they will allow you to make subtle adjustments, which is something that doesn't happen with very bad quality uh, tools. So that's very nice. Backlash here is about half a turn and uh, all the planes I have tried from Dictum, uh, they uh, mechanism wide they are just fantastic. Uh, let me get the other blade in place. This one has a much more subtle camber, a very very tiny, maybe it's a fall of a one third of a millimeter, something like this, uh, for the finer operations. You want to go carefully when you put the, the blade and chip breaker in the plane. And the lever cap, uh, it should work um, smoothly and effortlessly and you want enough tension to retain the adjustments that you have made so that you don't lose them when you're working but uh, not too much so that you can turn the wheel freely without too much effort okay that would be the right uh, amount of tension you can experiment with that and i would argue the least tension possible is always the best because uh, too much tension could cause problems uh, could even distort uh, the soul in some planes um, so that's a that's a thing to be mindful of so I'm going to evaluate now the kind of adjustment I have. Uh, for that I'm using a little bit of wood, which is something I learned from the late great David Chatsworth, who was a great master. And a little bit of wood tells me if I need to make a lateral adjustment or not. And for subtle adjustments I'm going to use a plain hammer. This one I find it really beautiful. It has kind of a zen look to it which I uh, really enjoy and it's hefty, it's heavy. Uh, it's uh, 115 grams and it does a splendid job for this. So for me, the best way to evaluate the flatness of the sole is to try and do the classic exercises. If you can prepare a straight edge, like the one we're going to do here, uh, without difficulty, then your plane is flat enough for work, for the work that you will do. And uh, of course your tolerance uh, might be different as mine, that will depend on the kind of work that you do. So let's do that exercise. So the first thing I do, as always, is to remove all machine marks. And now I'm going to deliberately hollow this piece. This is a classic exercise, you will find it explained everywhere. I think the best explanations for that are by Robert Waring in the, his book The Essential Woodworker and also David Chatsworth did a great job of uh, communicating those traditional techniques. So I'm going to remove everything except those corners starting here
you can listen very well now that those are high spots that are preventing the blade from making any cut. So if we check it now with a straight edge, you will see, you might see some light underneath or you can make it pivot and it will pivot from the extremes because clearly there is a very slight hollow in it. So your plane should be flat enough to remove now those high steps here and leave a minute, very minute hollow in this piece, which is what we call straight. Straight actually doesn't exist, it's only an idea. So we have a, a better or worst approximation to that on the hollow side. And if your plane is not flat enough, uh, the moment you destroy those high steps, a bump will return immediately. So let's see how it works. And now we can check again. So I can see a sliver of light, almost imperceptible, and I can still pivot from either end because there is a, a, a never so slight concavity in this uh, reference edge, which is what we want. Um, this is not, of course, a, a tutorial on this, um, but this is the way I take the flatness of a sole of a plane. If I can do this kind of precision work, uh, to a very very fine tolerance with a very fine shaping then I know my plane is flat and I don't need to re-flatten it then you could flatten the sole of your plane which is something you do once in a lifetime and then that's done okay with this one I don't really think I need it because I, I have proven to you now that uh, the, f the sole is completely flat or flat enough as I uh, like to say flat straight are only ideas uh, you work with tolerances when, when you're doing precision work and in my work I know this tolerance is enough for most operations I, I do. There's one more thing I need to tell you and it is uh, what to do if you hit an iron clamp uh, when you're working. That's a common mistake among students, it's an accident that happens all the time and it will leave you a nick and this nick will uh, score lines in your work and will ruin it. So you can get a file here this one is a diamond file but you could use a, a standard file and you could check all the edges here and make sure there's nothing rough that will um, create any any problems for you. You could just file that away okay and sometimes manufacturers have in the throat where, where the blade comes through this throat has some uh, very minute burr. Sometimes you could plane that away and you will experience that your plane uh, goes much uh, smoother because that little burr could cause some friction and you don't want that in your plane. So I think that's everything I have to say about uh, those hand planes. Uh, very good value for money, especially if you don't want to spend like 400 or 500 uh, euros in one hand plane but you still want it to perform well, to work uh, professionally and to, uh, to do a decent job for the rest of your life. Just one more thing, there are different kinds of blades available. I would go for the more expensive one, you will see it's worth it. Cheers now.